Okay, Brian, if you can tell us your name and the work you're doing in regards to Rights of Nature and the Yasuni ATT initiative. My name is Brian O'Leary, and uh, we're at Mount Esuenos in Vilcabamba uh, Retreat Center, where we come up with new ideas about saving the rainforest and developing uh, clean, renewable, sustainable energy. And uh, I was very pleased to hear about the announcement of the, uh, the Global Alliance uh, for the Rights of Nature because it is exactly what we need to do. Uh, the law is em emblazed now in the Constitution of Ecuador, which provides us uh, uh, an opportunity to uh, address many, many issues, not only the Ecuadorian uh, rainforest and uh, other parts where there's exploitation going on, the drilling of oil, the uh, mining, and so forth, but also throughout the world because the effect of uh, emissions has been just devastating all over the planet, not only in terms of contributing to climate change, but just the direct pollution of the atmosphere, of the water. Uh, and uh, so what, what I'd like to see happen now is the enforcement of this uh, 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 principle uh, that rights the rights of nature, the rights of the indigenous people are equal to those of all the rest of us. And unfortunately, um, and I was reflecting on this this morning, is that um, most anybody and in, in everybody in power can't see much beyond their noses. They, they, they look at the terms of elective political office, corporations look at quarterly profits, they want to optimize their profits as much as possible. And Ecuador is an example of a country which, uh, uh, which depends uh, financially on the export of oil and raw materials. And this can't last forever because, of course, it's a finite and non-renewable resource. And in the process of extracting these things, there's a, a huge damage done to the environment, to the indigenous people. And this most uh, precious uh, biodiverse spot on, on the entire planet. So it would be just absolutely, utterly ridiculous uh, to go in there and exploit it. Um, we've, we've seen examples of this. Even uh, a so-called clean exploitation isn't really clean. So I'm very happy to see that there's a movement going on now in uh, uh, this, this starting out right here in Latin America, whether it's the uh, country of Bolivia which I think quite correctly uh, has not agreed to the terms of the recent Cancun Climate Summit because uh, there's, there's simply, it, it, it's not enough to just have market-based solutions and trading carbon credits in order to save the rainforest or in order to stop uh, the acceleration of uh, uh, man-made uh, climate change. We're, we're going to need to do a lot more than that. We're going to need to innovate, and fortunately, there are many, many very good ideas out there. Uh, unfortunately, many of those ideas, in order to be implemented, will take more time, more time than the quarterly profits of a large corporation or of the terms of elected political office. So what we need to do as a world team here in this alliance is to be able to look at the long term in order, in order to uh, develop those innovations and technologies that work with nature rather than against nature. And the good news is that, that there are many such technologies. There are clean, breakthrough, uh, decentralized energy sources that are being developed in the laboratory actually all over the world. And there are also other things, medicinal herbs that can be used uh, from the rainforest. There's uh, innovative agricultural methods. There are various ecological restoration projects that are, are brilliantly uh, conceived that are very, very carefully analyzed and understood. And what we need to do now is to bring all of that effort together so that we can, as a team, develop those technologies that are truly sustainable for the Earth.